Well, the very sad news confirmed only a short while ago, South African radio legend Bob Mabena has died. In a statement released a short while ago, Power FM said it was feeling deep pain and grief. It said that Mabena had suffered cardiac arrest. With a career spanning 31 years, Mabena hosted some of South Africa's biggest radio shows. He hosted The Breakfast Show on Power FM, he cut his teeth in the early days at Radio Bop in the 80s, after which he worked at Metro FM, Kai FM, and Highfelt Stereo, where he was music manager. He also presented various SABC TV shows and worked as strategy director for SABC Commercial Services. In June, he lost his grandmother to COVID-19. He shared then on Twitter that she had contracted the disease while she was being treated in hospital for a lung infection. In July, Mabena released a 12-track music compilation, uh, which he described as his legacy project. Let's speak to Aika Apahla now, who is a friend and former colleague, uh, joining us to reflect on Bob Mabena's uh, role and, of course, his legacy. Mr. Apahla, uh, our condolences to, to you. Um, j just tell us how you heard the news today. Francis, uh, thank you very much. Uh, you can call me Aika. Thank you for this opportunity to pay tribute to one of the finest broadcasters of our era, but firstly, I would like to convey my sincerest condolences to his family, his Power FM colleagues, his listeners, and the entire broadcasting fraternity. We are certainly in shock, and we have lost uh, a great broadcaster. I was uh, called earlier on by one of the producers uh, from uh, your television station uh, who told me the news, and I'm still in shock. I can't believe uh, that uh, we have lost him. Yeah. Uh, tell us when, when you first met him. Um, you're, you're a friend, a, a former colleague. Uh, tell us um, how, how your relationship began. I met uh, Bob when he was still on Radio Bob uh, and he was um, uh, presenting with his uh, former wife, uh, Zandi Lenzalo. I was then a journalist and we had gone there to visit them and I then, our paths crossed again when he joined Radio Metro in the late 90s. Bob had a great personality. He was full of confidence. He was joining an illustrious lineup of broadcasters, and he was immensely talented, not only on radio, as you've alluded to, but on television as well. Many will recall that he was also a performing artist with the likes of Dr. Kumalo. He was a club DJ, so he was an all-rounder. I believe he had an illustrious career in broadcasting. He had a big heart, and who will forget that hearty, full-on laughter of his in the mornings? Yeah. I still remember my first uh, ever gig of playing at a live uh, DJ gig was alongside him. He taught me the tricks of the trade, very generous. And um, I never liked uh, that uh, part of uh, being a personality, but he went on to thrive in that field. So, so he was this larger-than-life um, personality on air. Just, just tell us more. Uh, you, you said he was uh, generous. Just tell us more about uh, how he was off air. Uh, off air, he was uh, very humble. He was a very humble guy and, as I said, very generous. He gave of his time. Uh, people would come. Uh, he wouldn't deny them the opportunity to mingle with him. When uh, Radio Metro went national, we, our first stop was Devon because we had a huge following there. And one of the tricks that I had learned earlier on was that uh, you have to play before uh, people get uh, a little bit tipsy. Uh, but Bob was playing uh, the main gig, which was uh, just after lunch. And uh, the crowd just couldn't get enough of him. He was mobbed, uh, and, uh, but he just uh, took it on as part of, uh, the things that you have to um, to contend with so when you are such a personality. Yeah. I think uh, from on the broadcasting level, he leaves a very rich broadcasting legacy and there's going to be big shoes to fill where he was. And one of the things that uh, he was in the process of working on was a documentary on black English commercial radio. Uh, nobody has ever done that. It's a pity has left so sudden without fulfilling that dream. But I'm glad that uh, he's got that album out, uh, which is also a legacy. We used to call him Mabena the Gemma because uh, he, could he could party a storm. And uh, we used to travel with him uh, with uh, Lawrence uh, Dube. He was uh, Lawrence Tabani then and uh, 
take trips down to uh, Cape Town, and uh, he was a, a big party animal at that. Uh, but what I liked is that, uh, you know, he could transform himself. Uh, he could become a manager. He could become uh, a broadcaster. He could deal with current affairs and deal with uh, sensitive uh, issues. Uh, deal with them, you know, in a very respectful manner. Yeah. And that's why I say he lived a very rich broadcasting legacy. Did, did you um, watch him grow? I mean, you knew him from, from the 80s, from, from Bop uh, days, and, and then you said your paths crossed again later. Um, do, do you think he, he changed as the journey progressed, or, or was he always um, consistent to working across uh, all the big broadcasters in South Africa? Uh, I think uh, I never saw him change a bit. Uh, he was uh, always the same person that we had met the first time. Uh, but there was no gray area with uh, Bob. If um, there was something that uh, he needed to cough out, he really would do that. And um, very creative when it came to doing jingles, uh, creative in encouraging other people also. Um, he wasn't selfish with his talent, uh, but he could share and he could mentor some people. Um, the broadcasting industry is full of ego. People are full of ego in that area. But uh, with him, I think uh, with the, the generation that uh, we came from, it wasn't all of that. Uh, we knew there was a space for creativity. There was a space for people to do what uh, they are best at. And uh, he would leave it at that. But uh, I saw him grow from becoming a club DJ, being a broadcaster, and being a seasoned broadcaster at that. Yeah. Uh, finally, you said he was a club DJ and he wanted people to remember that. Um, isn't it incredible that he had basically just finished uh, the, this latest project, describing it as his legacy project? Well, there are things that uh, we can't explain, and uh, maybe people get to know that, uh, you know, it's time that I'm going to be checking out. I need to leave something for people to remember me by. Uh, but I think when uh, things, uh, when notes are written about black commercial radio, uh, his name is going to be up there with uh, the likes of others. All right, thank you so much uh, for those remembrances tonight. Aich Pachla, who is a friend and former colleague, uh, reflecting on uh, Bob Mabena's radio legacy. Now, the ANC in.